Hi, everyone, and welcome to examining the principles of observability and its relevance in LLM applications. My name is Jean de Teuf, and I've been in observability since 2019. Uh, I participate in the open, te open telemetry community. Um, I work at IBM, and I'm a software engineer. And at IBM, I work in the infrastructure team, which is responsible for resources and metrics. But I've also been in, in the tracing team um, at, at Instana. And uh, I'm also a former Scala IO and Lyon Tech Hub organizers, which are two uh, French associations and conferences. Uh, you can find me on, on X and on LinkedIn as well. And I'd like to thank also Guanya uh, Liu, who could, couldn't be here today, for the content of this presentation. Uh, so to give a bit of background, um, here's the context. Uh, well, the, here's the current landscape for LLMs. So in the first zone, you have your large language models, your existing large language models. And in the zone, the zone two, you have, um, uh, you have the general use cases for these LLMs. And then you have specific implementations, such as um, NLP, Diallo, GPT. Uh, and in zone four, four you have um, big actors around LLMs. In zone five, you have tooling around these LLMs. And then once you get to zone six, this is where you have uh, your user interaction with LLMs. But that um, is the context of 2023, uh, which is the year of the LLM, where everybody talked about the LLMs. And 2024 is actually the year of AI applications. Uh, and actually, ChatGPT launched a store uh, called GPTs with uh, many applications which are, which are built on top of LLMs. So if you have an uh, LLM application, here's your tool chain. So you have your LLM, which is the basis for your application. You can use whichever LLM you like. So it could be OpenAI, Llama 2, what's on X for IBM. And then on top of that, you have your orchestration platform, uh, which you can use Langchain, Langflow, uh, Light LLM. Uh, but then you actually need, um, for in order to go to production, you need a, an observability platform to monitor what they are actually doing and their interaction. Uh, so why actually do you need AI observability? Um, when it comes to LLM, the quality of outputs uh, is important, and it's difficult to measure, uh, because the result, results can be inaccurate, unhelpful, uh, poorly formatted. There can be hallucinations or errors. So th this is why we need to know what's going on. Also, with LLMs, you usually interact with an external service um, publishing these LLMs. And that service comes with a, um, a cost for compute or the talk tokens as well. Um, also, the, the model response is not instantaneous. There's a latency to that, that model response. And debugging what happens with an LLM is quite challenging, especially when it comes to LLM applications, because you have different ways to interact with your LLMs through agents, uh, chains, tool usage. Uh, and we also need to understand the user behavior um, from these um, LLM applications. Uh, what were the uh, user, um, user prompts, the conversational interactions, these sort of things. Let's take a look at the existing observability tools. Um, who here is familiar with the term observability? and what it actually means. Uh, maybe I'll just give a quick background. Observability um, is a way to uh, monitor your infrastructure, um, where it could be your processes, your services, anything that's running. Um, some um, very well-known observability platforms include um, Datadog, Instana, uh, Dynatrace, which you might be familiar with. Uh, but here we're focusing on the observability tools for LLMs, uh, which include Traceloop. Uh, it's one of the famous ones. But there's also Langfuse, Lunary AI, 
Lily code. And then you got your commercial tools uh, for LLMs, such as Instana, Langsmith, Prompt Player. Uh, you can see the list is actually quite small, uh, uh, but they're actually quite popular. Uh, and like I said, uh, observability uh, is actually about metric collection, tracing. Um, and here we actually need a unified way to, um, a standard way to observe LLMs, um, which is why what actually Traceloop is, uh, is about. Um, well, there were very few people uh, who knew about um, observability, so who here is familiar with uh, open telemetry? Okay, good. Open telemetry is actually a, a standard for observability, an open source standard. And it has conventions, um, conventions defining what data we actually capture. Um, it's called a semantic convention. And each technology basically has a list of, um, of data to capture. And for LLM it, itself, uh, that list of data is very specific. Uh, and the list of a semantic convention has been defined very recently. And actually, Guanya uh, participated in the PR for defining the semantic conventions. Um, I'll come around to what exactly is, is captured uh, in that data. But you can see that um, Traceloop, Microsoft, IBM, and Honeycomb contributed to, to the semantic conventions around LLMs. Um, um, so what is actually Traceloop? Uh, Traceloop is an open source project um, which uh, is an open telemetry, open source project because it it has a lot of instrumentations around um, around LLMs. So you can see there are instrumentations about uh, Anthropic, Watson X, Haystack. Many, many of the common um, technologies which you see around LLMs, they usually have their own instrumentation uh, in Traceloop. So this is why it's, it's becoming a standard. And it might also um, merge into open telemetry. Uh, it's just that it's emergent and very recent. Um, Traceloop has a list of supported destinations uh, because it's part of open telemetry. So you can export data from Traceloop to some of these locations. So I mentioned Datadog, New Relic, Dynatrace, there's Instana, lots of destinations. And it supports, as we saw on the previous slide, um, many providers, uh, Hugging Face, Anthropix, uh, Vertex AI, as well as frameworks uh, and vector DBs. And these are sort of like, um, well, LLM providers, frameworks, and vector DBs. They're three parts of the stack. And they're monitored by what you see on the, on the left, the destinations. Here is uh, a schema of an uh, open telemetry collector. So an, a collector is, comprises of mainly three parts. Uh, first part being the receiver, uh, receiving the data. So here, the data would be uh, either your LLM application, your LLM itself, um, a data source. It could be also a DCGM service, if you're using GPUs. Uh, might be a Prometheus service. Um, the second part would be a processor. That, Part is actually optional, uh, but we usually use processors for, let's say, batching, sampling, um, yeah, the, the, these sorts of things. And the third part, um, which is as important as the first part, is the exporter. Um, we need exporters for um, our destinations. So if you want to export all the data that you've captured using Open Telemetry, so here for Open Telemetry for LLM. Uh, you need an exporter adapted to the destination. So say Prometheus, Jaeger, Zipkin, or, or Instana. Um, uh, here's also another good visualization of an open telemetry collector. Here you can see there are three pipelines. There's one for traces, one for metrics, and one for logs. It's usually what we have um, for, for observability, but you can define many, many pipelines. Uh, and there are three parts. There's the receiver, the processor, and the exporter. Uh, it's just a nice way of, of displaying it, so this is why I wanted to showcase it. So using 
um, open telemetry, we can achieve a full stack AI observability because you would have your application uh, at the very top, which is built on, on your LLMs and which you're going to use. Uh, that application will use Gen AI frameworks to actually um, query these LLMs. Then you have your LLMs providers. These will might use a vector database. Uh, and that vector database will uh, be executed on, on an infrastructure. So we'll use CPUs, GPUs. And, and these are all resources which you can view um, using open telemetry and observability in general. Um, and what's key here uh, about observability is that you'll be able to fine tune your model because Observability will mean you will know what is the latency for your model, your, its accuracy, uh, and the cost, because these will be uh, things which we will be captured. So anytime you interrogate your LLM, uh, that will take some time. It will have a certain cost, and it might not be all that accurate. And you want all this to be reported to an observability platform so you can actually measure uh, the quality of your output and how much it costs to you. And once you do that, uh, you can reevaluate your model, fine tune it, and then see the outcome again um, in a sort of virtuous circle. Um, I don't know if you've, if you've been to the conference about, um, uh, what is it called again? Uh, um, oh, I forgot, uh, from the people from, from Red Hat, uh, Instruct Lab. If you've been to the conference for, from Instruct Cloud, you can typically do this. Um, evaluate your model, suggest, well, uh, fine tuning through PRs, and then observe the changes to, um, to your model and to your application, especially um, in, in sort of a, like this circle. Um, so I talked about uh, data that was captured. Here's an example of using Watson X with Jaeger, using an application. You can typically launch this type of application using uh, an open telemetry collector. There's a demo which you can launch, and there's a Docker Compose file which, uh, that you can use, and it spins up everything, including um, a Prometheus, a Zipkin, and a Jaeger that goes with it. And then you need to actually have an application. So there's a sample app provided by Traceloop using most of the uh, common uh, instrumentation from Traceloop. Uh, the, the link is actually in the presentation. Uh, uh, so th this will mean that your application will be traced. And I can't really see here. It's pretty small. Um, but this is part of the data captured. Um, let's see here. Right here. These are the things which are captured. So you can see there's the vendor, there's the prompt, the accuracy, uh, the temperature. These are the, thi the model, of course. Uh, these are the things that are captured every time you interrogate an LLM. Every time you, you make a query to it uh, in your application, if you, if you built on top of, of an LLM, it will be back and forth to your LLM, uh, and it will make uh, several prompts. It, it can be prompts, but it can be also another, uh, another operation. The operation actually is also captured. Um, which means you can, you can aggregate on all the queries which are made to your LLM uh, and see what are the outliers, say, um, what are the prompts which were inaccurate. You can filter on all of this. Everything is captured, and then you can um, revisit what it does. Also, the, uh, the version of the LLM is also captured, so you can see the evolution between one model to the other uh, and how that affects things like accuracy, latency, and cost. Here's an example using Instana uh, because I, I work at IBM and, and most specifically at Instana. And you can see the tracing um, here. I don't know if you can, uh, yeah, you can see here. Um, so here you have a, an application which calls an LLM multiple times. And you can see over time, there's this actually a stack. Um, those of you who are familiar with profiling, 
Um, this looks very much like profiling. You could see every call that's made, how long it takes, uh, if it's in sequence, if it's in parallel. Um, all these are important things. And on the right, you can see the data captured for each of these calls. I think there's another example as well. Yeah. Um, and using all that data. That the previous example was actually focused on a single call, single trace. Uh, but if you take all the traces from your application, um, all the prompts which users have made using your application, you can actually aggregate on that and see how, uh, how your model is doing, uh, how many tokens were uh, we queried, the, the cost. Uh, you can view, view it over time. Uh, and yeah, you, you can do fancy things um, using observability. And of course, that uh, integrates with all your infrastructure and all your observability platform, which you probably already use, um, depending on your organization. Um, right. I think we're close to the end. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm right in time. Um, yeah, uh, I left some time for questions. So, um, yeah, thank you very much. I don't know if there are questions. I have a, a microphone available if you want. Thanks. Thanks. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you could talk about the, well, A, if there is any overlap, and B, if there is, yeah. what the nature of it is between um, observability for Gen AI um, versus um, for more traditional ML applications, so thinking about data drift, sentiment drift, things like that. Should we think about these things in the same way, monitoring, or no? Um. I think I should have put a disclaimer because I'm not uh, an AI specialist. I'm, I'm more an observability specialist. So I don't know if I'd be qualified to transfer that question. Sorry. Um, yeah, go ahead. So, uh, like a, a lot of the observability assumed that the code existed, right? And you were observing the code. Yes. But now, which a lot of the generative AI and agent based systems, there won't be any code or the agents will just act. A runtime. Do you know of any work that's trying to look into observability of agents? Um, I don't know if I got got this correctly. So what you're asking is if um, if, if this is using Gen AI to observe, or no, like in an agent-based system, yeah. there is no code. Like the agents will think, mm -hmm. and then they will act. Okay. Yeah. So now. That code, actually, there's no debugging in it at that moment, and that code doesn't even exist. So you can't actually go back and actually mm. debug the problem. Right. Uh, this is actually on top of the LLM. So if you have an application requesting and uh, querying a LLM multiple times, then you'll see the interactions between your code and the LLM. But you won't see the um, underlying um, queries inside the LLM. You might see the queries to the vector database that the LLM might make, uh, but that's about it uh, as debugging goes. OK, thanks. Yeah. Any more questions? No? Right. Thank you very much.